Welcome to episode 11 of .NET Concept of the Week, where I explain a concept related to .NET programming every week in a short video. This time we have a performance related topic, we are going to talk about vectorization and SIMD. Before we jump into Visual Studio and C Sharp, let me quickly explain what vectorization and SIMD are. When we look at classic assembly code, then we see operators like add or the move instruction and those basically take two or one values and produce a single result. So with the add instruction, we can add two integers together and the result is a single integer. Now as a C Sharp developer, you don't write those instructions directly when you code in C Sharp, but your C Sharp code will be compiled by the C Sharp compiler into IA code and this IA code will be compiled into this assembly syntax by the JIT compiler. Now if we let's say have two arrays, each containing eight integers and we want to add the values from the first array to the values from the second array, then the first idea would be to take the first item from both arrays, add them together with the add operator and then to put it into the first position of the third array. Then do the same with the second items, then with the third items and repeat this until we reach the end of the array. But modern CPUs offer better instructions for those scenarios, these are the so-called SIMD instructions. SIMD stands for single instruction multiple data and those instructions can have multiple operands. For example, the VPADD instruction can add packed double word integers. This is a SIMD instruction that takes two integer vectors, each containing eight integers and add the items from the first vector to the items from the second vector in a single instruction. The point here is that the instruction operates on 8 integers at the same time, so instead of iterating through all 8 integers and use the add assembly instruction on each item, we can do the whole thing in a single round. There are many SIMD instructions, what we see here is just one example. There is a similar one for multiplication, division, subtraction and of course there are also a version of those for floating point data. Typically older CPU generations support less SIMD instructions and there are still CPUs out there which support only a few SIMD instructions. Alright, now let's jump into Visual Studio and add two arrays together. I have a very simple for loop here that sums each item from the two arrays and stores the result into a third one. I already have benchmark.net here and with the disassembly diagnoser attribute, I save the generated IL and assembly code into a report. I linked a video in the description about benchmark.net, so if this is new to you and you want to know more about this, then check out my video about benchmark.net. So here we see the assembly that gets generated from the for loop. As you can see, the JIT used the add assembly instruction, so there is no SIMD instruction here. This is a little bit sad, so by default the .NET JIT compiler, in this case RioJIT, doesn't generate SIMD instruction. Let me jump back to the code and write a second version where we will tell the JIT compiler to generate SIMD instructions. Now in order to do this, we will use the vector class from the system.numeric namespace. As you can see, it says that this type represents a single vector of a specific numeric type that is suitable for low level optimization of parallel algorithms. Now what this try to tell us is that by using this type, the JIT compiler will generate SIMD instructions when it's possible. Also in my opinion this naming is extremely misleading, so an instance of this vector class basically represents a SIMD CPU register, so what you store here is data that can be passed to a SIMD instruction and the size of this vector is fixed and it depends on the CPU that executes this code. If you write C++ code, then you are probably familiar with the std vector class, now this vector is completely different, this has a fixed size and it's optimized for SIMD instructions. The count property tells us the size of this register, so by passing integer to the generic type, we will know the number of integers that we can push into this register and work with within a single CPU cycle. Alright, now let's generate the for loop, so instead of incrementing i by 1, we increment it with the size of this vector. Now what we do here is the following, First we move the first i and i plus vect size items into a vector from the first array and then we do the same for the second array. On my machine the size of an integer vector is 8, 
So in the first iteration, we move the first 8 items, then in the second iteration, we move the items from position 8 to 15, and so on. Now moving items into a vector is also a SIMD instruction, so we don't do this sequentially. Then we add the two integers together, so this adds the first item from VA to the first item in VB, and then the second item, and so on. But the key is that this is done with a SIMD instruction, so this is not sequential, we add 8 items here together at the same time. The result is stored in a third array, and then at the end, we copy the result into the return value. Now it's possible that the last part of the input array doesn't fill the vector, like I said, in my case a vector contains 8 items, so if v1 and v2 contains for example 10 items, then we have to do something with the last two items. For this, I simply write a for loop that does the job sequentially. This is by the way a typical scenario with vectorization, so always make sure that you process the whole input data. Now to keep this simple, we don't focus on error handling here, we just assume that the two input arrays have the same length, and they are not null. Alright, so we have a vectorized version of our sample method, now let's measure the difference. I already configured benchmark.net, and I also have two arrays here, each with 120 integers. We add together those two arrays, once with the traditional for loop, and once with the vectorized version. And here is the result, as you can see, we have an almost 2x difference thanks to the SIMD instructions. So when performance matters, it's definitely worth to spend time on vectorization. Let's also take a look at the generated assembly code. As you can see, this is where we add the two vectors together, and the generated assembly is a single SIMD instruction. And again, this works on 8 integers at the same time. And this one here is an other SIMD instruction, this one moves the result into the return value. So there are lots of copying and moving here, but the key is that we add 8 integers together here in a single instruction, and that is a huge performance boost, and these SIMD move instructions are still negligible, as we saw on the benchmark numbers. Now let's do one more thing, I change the integers to double, integers are 32-bit, and doubles are 64-bit. This means that the size of the vector will be 4 instead of 8, so the plus operator will work only on 4 items. Now let's measure this version, as you can see the vectorized version is still faster, but we don't have the 2x performance boost here. Alright, now let me show you a few other things, besides addition, you can of course do other things. For example, you can multiply or divide items, furthermore, on the vector class there are other useful methods. You can for example calculate the dot product of two vectors, you can select the minimum or the maximum of each pair of elements in the two given arrays, and all those are implemented with SIMD instructions when possible. Now if the CPU where this code runs doesn't support SIMD instructions, then the JIT compiler will generate old school machine code with operators that work on single operands. So by using this class, the generated machine code depends on the hardware where you execute this code. Now one limitation I would like to point out is that you cannot create a vector from decimal items. You can use any built-in numeric type except decimals. A decimal is 128-bit, so on my CPU we could only push two of them into a vector, but moving them in and out would also add overhead, so it wouldn't add any performance benefit anyway. But in case you do it, you will get a type initialization exception. Alright, that's it for this week, I hope you liked the video, thanks for watching, and next week I will explain another .NET concept. 